Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm covering the new Google Analytics 4 connector for Tableau. I've already made a video about this in the past, but it's about to be out of date. So if you've used that video or if you use Google Analytics and you don't know about the change coming, this is a video you need to watch. As ever, let's get stuck in. So you might not know this, but there's a new Google Analytics property change coming about. Essentially, every so often, Google Analytics changes the way that its core underlying architecture works. And that means there's a change to the way Tableau accesses that data. If you've previously come to Tableau, you've typically accessed Google Analytics by going into this a list of connectors and going to the drop down and finding Google Analytics. You'll actually see I have two the old Google Analytics connector and Google Analytics 4, which is the new connector. Now, if you don't see Google Analytics 4 on your machine, maybe it's not been installed for you, you can actually go and get this connector yourself. It's super easy. Just go ahead and go to the Tableau Exchange. If you don't know what the Tableau Exchange is, it's essentially the marketplace for Tableau tools. You've got accelerators, which are templates. I wish they just call them that. Uh, dashboard extensions, which add features to your dashboards. And then you've got connectors, which essentially allow you to connect to new uh, data sources. So if you go ahead and click on the connectors tab here, you'll see you go to this page and this actually has a list of connectors. If I scroll down, you'll see there is actually a new one here for Google Analytics 4. If you go to that, it gives you the basic instructions. All you need to do is hit download. It will get a file and it'll put that onto your machine. Once you have that file, you're not done yet. You still have to go and put that file in a specific place. It's essentially the My Tableau repository for Tableau Desktop or Tableau Prep. So I've actually got this already open here. You can see I've got the Prep version open. And in each of those repository locations, if you go to the Connectors folder, you'll see that I have my Google Analytics connector and I'll do the same thing. So my Tableau repository, Google Analytics. And the, the thing to bear in mind here is that this connector might get updates. So I think it's also important to make sure you check uh, this particular page to make sure you got updates on a semi-frequent basis, maybe every month, uh, just as it's new, because these are likely to get updates as bugs sort of get ironed out. So just be sure to hit that sort of link, bookmark it, and come back and check this periodically, or if something breaks, you know where to come to find the solution. So once you've put that in the folder, it's now available as a connector. And when you go and connect to that property, let's go ahead and select Google Analytics 4, you'll see that Tableau opens up a new window. Now, what it has to do is it has to authenticate with Google. So let's go ahead and do that. I have quite a few Google accounts. So let's go ahead and hit the one that I know works with my analytics property. You do need to make sure that you have permission to access that Google Analytics pro property with the login you're using. Sometimes people log in with a username or access that they think has access, but it doesn't. Then they can't find the property and something goes wrong. Or they have a specific username and login that you know accesses a different property, named the same thing with a different number, and it gets confusing. Just make sure you're using the right username and password. Go ahead, select continue. Once you've done that, Tableau will tell you, hey, you can close this window. And I had this sort of challenge because it closed. And what actually ended up happening is I went to Tableau. And I was sitting there like this. And I was like, huh, why is this taking so long? And I realized there was a window behind the Tableau window. And depending on sort of how it loaded for you, you might actually get this window in the background. You might be impatient, you might be clicking around, you might do what I've just done there, just trying to click around, not even paying attention to what's going on. And you're sitting there watching this query run and the query does sound like something's running. So a little bit of feedback to Tableau. It would be nice if this query told you that, hey, you need to go back to this window to finish actually setting it up. So once you're here, you'll see that you have four steps. It's super simple. You want to go to the accounts tab. And when you go ahead and click on this, what essentially it does is it sends a query out to Google Analytics and it asks it for all the properties and accounts that you have in your account. You can see it's taking a bit of time to actually load the list. Uh, again, I have quite a few, but I'm going to go to the Tableau Tim account. That is the account for my website, tableautim.com. Uh, and then once I've selected that account, I actually have multiple properties and I can only see one of those properties in this particular setup with this Google account. So I'll go ahead and select the Webflow site, which is the uh, date, you know, setup that runs my website. So I've called it such. So let's go ahead to the next step. Um, once you've done the first step, the next step is about selecting the range of data you want to use. And so uh, this is actually quite a nice interface. You get a, a range of options. You've got some pretty sort of suggested ones here at the top, but you can also dial in the start date and end date yourself, depending on how you want it to work. I'll just go for a fixed start date because typically when I'm looking at Google Analytics, there's normally a fixed sort of time frame, and you, you don't you don't typically look that 
back that far. Normally, a lot of the analytics you're doing is on more, more recent performance, maybe even sometimes in the last you know, few months, not even really years. But I'll go ahead and say beginning of last year. So this will go back to last year and go back to January the 1st on that particular one. Once we've done that, you see it, when you click on that, it just puts that in as a start date and does a sort of field for you. And what's essentially happening in the background is it's building the query that it's going to use for the API. And then for this next step, what it asks you to do is to choose the field. Now, this field catches so many people out because they don't realize that specific analytics properties lock out other parts of the Google Analytics setup. So as a very simple example, if I go to a page slash screen and we scroll down and I select the full page URL, that's a very sort of sensible thing I might want to do. I might want to get the full URL of the page. But if you're not familiar with Google Analytics, you might not realize that you can see some of these have been grayed out. Some of these have sort of been removed as an option. And one of the things you might want to do, let's for example, go to a traffic source uh, uh, as another one. You might want to bring in, uh, not the traffic source, sorry. Uh, what was I trying to do? The platform device, here we go. You might want to bring in the browser. OK, so if you go and get the full page URL, which sounds like a totally normal URL, you won't be able to get the information about the browser because that full page URL is actually referring to something else. So um, if you don't know the Google Analytics uh, full properties very well, go ahead and Google it off. You'll find links um, all over the Internet showing you how to use it. Um, we're going to go ahead and uncheck that one because actually we want something a little bit more useful. So let's go ahead and uncheck that. I um, have to say it's a little bit sort of laggy. Um, I think it's my Mac experience here combined with this sort of web interface. Um, I know for a fact that Tableau doesn't support Mac OS Ventura. It's about to in 23.2, but it doesn't yet. And uh, a new version of Mac OS is about to be announced in literally 48 hours. So <laughs> just about in time. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get the page path. That's actually what you want to see the different sort of uh, uh, part, part of the URL. I'll get the page title. We won't get too many things. So I just want to keep this short for the purpose of the video. Um, we can then go ahead and get the browser. Uh, go ahead and grab that. And um, you can do a bunch of different things. The only word of caution I'll say here is um, as you're making selections, be be very aware of the, the impact it has on granularity. Yeah, it's very nice to go and select a shopping list of everything. But you've got to remember, if you go down to, if I go to date and time and I decide to, you know, select the data at the date and hour level, that is, that is a lot more rows. That's 24 more rows than I would have got if I just selected dates per record okay so that's something really sort of important to bear in mind and um i don't know if this is still the case with google analytics 4 but with the previous google analytics api you could actually hit a limit and at that limit what it was doing is was sampling the whole data set so that's something else that's pretty common with google analytics not many people know that unless you're paying for google analytics it quite often samples your data so it doesn't actually uh, sort of give you a, a, an accurate number, what it's actually doing is it's sampling a percentage of your data and it's making sure that that sample is a fair reflection of the actual setup. So you can have these percentages that move one or two percent depending on when you pull the data and how you query the API. Um, so bear bear that in mind. Anyway, let's get let's try and really get through this. I've selected date. Um, let's get let's get one more thing. Let's see if what we can get about the user. Um, uh, let's see. Maybe not the user. User lifetime. Yeah, we can. Oh, go on. Let's get the first session date. That's a really that's really bold. That will that will really explode our granularity as well because for every unique user, it's going to want to know the first time they started that session. So at least if we um, you know, have a, a month's worth of data. If we're analyzing a really narrow window, that's actually quite helpful for, for figuring out what's going on with a session. So anyway, um, the metrics are here on the right hand side. So um, the, the classic ones are how much time people spend on the page. So I'm clicking on it and it's not, you can see every time I click on it, it, it goes red. Um, then if I have to click the arrows, no, um, now I can click any part of it, but you can see it was just taking a while to kind of uh, happen. Uh, anyway, we got views, views per session, views per user. You can see again, I'm clicking on this, but it's just, it's just a little bit, a little bit unresponsive. So <laughs> I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. This is like the first release. Uh, it's whatever version it is, so 1.0 something. Um, and then we'll go ahead and select next. And now we have essentially our setup. So we've got the property, we've got the date range, we've got the start date, the dimensions and metrics. Um, bear in mind what I said there about that information. So let's go ahead and hit connect. 
And at this point, this is when the API actually goes out and does a request for us based on these metrics. And you can see it's pretty fast. It's already back with the data. A few things to bear in mind here. Um, this is an extract. You can't connect to it live because essentially it's an API request and uh, API requests uh, have to sort of, you know, call home, get the data and come back. And so the only way Tableau can store that data is to store it as an extract. It can't keep asking that data and keep updating it. That's not sort of the way the setup of the API has worked. But um, if you are using a technology such as uh, Fivetran or whatever other technology you might be using, uh, typically there, what people are doing is they're piping this data into their database, then querying their database and querying that live. And uh, tools like Fivetran have the ability to sort of uh, schedule this capability. I actually use Fivetran myself for my Google Analytics. It pushes data to Snowflake and I connect to that data in Snowflake. So um, Fivetran take care of all the hard work of setting up all these API connections and making sure it's up to date. I get the data in my database where I can work with it however I want. And I know that every 15 to 20 minutes is getting updated by Fivetran. So that's essentially how I, how I run that. But if you're using Tableau, you want to connect directly to the data source, this is a pretty good way of doing it. So um, now we have our data. The other thing you can't do is add multiple connections. You might sort of want to build a data model here. It doesn't appear that that's uh, possible, but what you can do is you can add a second connection. So if you go up to data and here you say new data source, it will actually create a new data source here. So you'll essentially have two data sources you can use. And then once in Tableau, you can blend them. So you can essentially create a field that is common between the two, and then you can use them to blend. That's useful if you're downloading what I would say two very distinct data sets. Maybe one is about um, traffics and journey and you know how, how a page is doing. And another one is about a specific campaign. And all you want to do is maybe match up the behaviors on a specific day or match up the behaviors for a specific country. Um, the thing that's common is, is that one field or two fields, but everything else is actually completely separate, different levels of granularity. That works as well. So a blend can work in that setup to help you kind of achieve some, some, some interesting results. But nonetheless, as soon as obviously you've connected to your data, it's an extract. So once you go over to the uh, sheet, you can actually now start using uh, various things. So if I go ahead and grab the page title and uh, we go ahead and look at screen page views, uh, let's go ahead and do that. And let's sort this out. We can see that the most uh, viewed page on my website here is, uh, thank God, the home page. So you can see that that's had, at least in the last two uh, years, 7,707. Now, these are, this is small fry compared to like actual websites. This is very, very low numbers. But if I was uh, being smart about this, what I would do is I wouldn't just go look at the web page. Um, I'd go to the other pages, so the tutorials, um, uh, how I've made a particular video, I think this one is, uh, tablets and blog posts, column reordering enhancements in Tableau 22.2. Um, so something I'm trying to do is give people an alternative way to watch my videos. I've got some exciting news about that, stay tuned. Um, but nonetheless, um, yeah, this is basically uh, what is being viewed. And so we've got low view numbers here, but again, YouTube is typically the way that, you know, most people watch my content, so I'm not too bummed out about this. But nonetheless, there you go. We've got Google Analytics 4 working. Super simple, super easy. I've tried to add in a lot of context as much as I possibly can based on my experience. But again, if you need to do this in a serious, reliable way, you might choose to pipe your data first into a database. Then from there, you can work with it in your standard ways. Um, and there are tools like Fivetran that can do that for you. For, for, for Google Analytics, I think it's actually quite cheap on something like Fivetran. There are cheaper ways of doing it as well. Um, but nonetheless, um, I think it's, you know, workable. I use it myself as a content creator. That's sort of how cheap it is. Um, I can afford to sort of run that and then query it as and when. But anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.